Good. We should get to know um, Andre here. <laughs> He's the guy. And this this could be a rather short session. Okay. Hi. Oh. San Antonio. Great. Oh, great to have you here, Andre. <laughs> uh, very nice. San Antonio is a great city. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just introduce ourselves to, I'm Kristen Sheehan and, oh. <laughs> uh, feel free to unmute and speak up anytime, Andre, too. You don't have to use the chat. <laughs> uh, but I'm Kristen Sheehan, I'm the program director for Play Like a Champion, and I am a Notre Dame graduate. Uh, that's my Holy Cross connection. I have. Um, a double domer, um, two degrees from Notre Dame is uh, what they affectionately call double domers, people who have gotten to go there twice. And I um, have degrees in uh, my BA is in theology and gender studies and peace studies. And my master's is in psychology. And while I was a student, I got to meet Professor Clark Power. Uh, not in the classroom, but uh, he and his wife Anne served as my husband and my marriage prep host couple when we were engaged and going through marriage preparation and uh, got to become a part of the Play Like a Champion initiative uh, when he launched it. So I'll let Clark introduce himself. Yeah, um, so I'm Clark. Um, I uh, started I play like a champion and I teach at Notre Dame. Um, I'm a, um, I teach psychology and education. So uh, I've spent my whole life working with children um, in schools and in, um, and in sports. And I've had the blessing of working with Kristen now for 15 years. And um, yeah, so Andre, maybe um, if it's possible, uh, would you want to Unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. How you got into coaching? Uh, hello, guys. <clears throat> I'm from Mexico. I mean, uh, I'm born and grown in uh, Mexico, Veracruz State. And um, I used to play in, over there football. And I'm start coaching football uh, since uh, probably 35 38 years ago oh, wonderful. and um, for the life I need to move from Mexico to here the States and since 1996 and um, now I have the blessed coach in football as assistant coach in Holy Cross San Antonio uh, Knights and I'm the soccer head coach but uh, I have to be honest to you <clears throat> with you my best sport is the football. But by the way, go the uh, verde amarela, big guy. <laughs> yeah, he, the, the guy from uh, Brazil, he understands what, what it means verde amarela. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, Mr. Loya. <laughs> so what, will you let us in? What does it mean? <laughs> so verde and amarela, at least in Brazil, uh, we are we are big like for soccer because it's the colors of our country. I'm not sure if it's the same for Mexico. Uh, what 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 it is for you? Okay, in Mexico, yeah, the 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 main sports in Mexico is soccer, mm -hmm. and uh, actually in in the 80, 1970 and nineteen eighty six we have two World War, World Cups over there, and then nineteen. Uh, 1970, the champs was Brazil, and uh, 86 was Argentina, which is in soccer. They're very hard rivals between them. I mean, every, I mean, the Mexico likes everybody knows so a little bit from soccer, and uh, uh, we always know the the people. I uh, we love uh, uh, Pele. Yeah. The soccer players. Yeah. We love Maradona from uh, Argentina. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm born with I'm born, I'm sorry. I'm uh, uh, married with an Argentina uh, uh, woman, lady, and uh, she loves the the soccer either, and she loves uh, Maradona. Yeah. But like I said, my main sport is football. I never <laughs> play. Yeah. Yeah. I never. <laughs> soccer guys i mean uh, this, the reason i was soccer coach is because the 
<clears throat> in my first school in McAllen, Texas, uh, one day they says, uh, we need volunteers for a soccer coach. Everybody, I mean, the, the volunteer places make one step forward. Nobody. <laughs> and uh, yeah. nobody make that step. And uh, AD says, Coach Loya, thank you very much. <laughs> You're the one. <laughs> yeah. And I'm start to, uh, since probably eight years ago, I'm start to learning about soccer, uh, how coach soccer. Yeah. Are you enjoying it then, Coach Loya? I love the sports and I love the kids. And um, I'm, I mean, like I said, I'm, I mean, I'm start coaching football since 15 years old in, in Mexico. But, and I love the, uh, the philosophy from Catholic schools. So I'm always involved in the Catholic school in, in the schools. And uh, when I'm started over here in the States and back in 96, I'm starting with the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, with the kids and in uh, my philosophy and I uh, probably do not uh, I do not want to uh, have any hard feelings from anybody my philosophy is the knowledge is on the books and with the teachers how to solve the problems the sports let you know how you resolve the problems every time that you have them, your ball close to you it's a problem to solve <laughs> and uh, now in uh, our life or war we need to know how how solve problems. Yeah, that's very nicely put, and um, I think uh, that's how we we try to approach the um, sports from play like a champion. I should add, I, I I was a soccer coach under the same circumstance as my um, I had a very when my son was about six or seven, I brought him over to play soccer and. They said, well, if you want your son, to, we have a team of children, but we don't have a coach. So if you want your son to play, then you're the coach. <laughs> and I said, I never played on rules. And they said, well, you can get this other guy to help you. His name was Tom. So I said, hey, Tom, I'm counting on you, Tom. You, you're the head coach. And he said, no, I'm not. I never played either. He was a football player, but he never played soccer. So I said, okay, well then we're going to have to read books and, and, and get, get, get some people in. You know, I, I was, I teach in Notre Dame. So one of my students was uh, on the soccer team. So I said, you're coming over. You're going to teach them the drills. You're going to teach them fundamental skills because obviously I don't know what I'm doing. And then we'll, we'll pick it up. So we had a lot of fun. And, uh, but we, we did um, have the philosophy that you had, Andre, that, uh, that you have which is that um, sports is a great chance for, uh, for kids to um, uh, use, their, use their brains as well as their bodies to play a really fun game, but a game that's challenging. And every play is a challenge and every play is different. So I'm really glad that um, uh, I think you already are tuned into what we're, what we're all about. So I'm gonna hand, uh, I'm gonna kick the ball back to Kristen here. Looks like we may have picked up somebody else here. Yeah, looks like we have, An hey, Andrew, welcome. Feel free to um, turn your camera on and unmute but uh, so we can meet you. Um, but I'm going to make it three for three coaches here. I also was a soccer coach. And the reason I ended up being a coach is I walked in to sign my son up for soccer and they said, can you volunteer? I said, sure, I can volunteer. They said, well, could you be the convener? And the convener at this organization created all the teams. And when I said, ah, I can put teams together, you know, I can kind of, you know, make sure we write number of kids on each team and it's kind of the same neighborhood. And, um, and then they said, but you also have to find the coaches. And so I had to find 20 coaches. And so I thought, well, I guess I can be one of them that I only have to find 19. <laughs> and I went out and I knew nothing about soccer. I grew up as a gymnast and a cheerleader, right? So I went out and got um, coaching soccer for dummies. You know, those books? And that was great. Now, fortunately, the kids were only five. So the biggest thing was just to let them have fun, you know, teach them a little how to kick the ball and stay in position, right? But that was the big thing was to have fun. So <laughs> three for three, volunteers got, got roped into the job, right? 
Um, all right. Well, we'll we'll take you through the presentation, especially since Philippe said it's being recorded, so people are you know going to want to actually see what we're about. Um, so first of all, who is Play Like a Champion? We are a national coach, education, and consultancy organization, and we provide programming, educational programming. Uh, for coaches, sport parents, and athletes in a Catholic-sponsored tradition. Um, and from what we know, we believe we are the largest provider um, of this type of educational service uh, for Catholic schools. Uh, we started in 2006 uh, based upon Clark's research that there were some troubling circumstances happening in the world of youth sports. And people often thought that sports develops your character, Andre, like what you said, you know, teaches people how to make good decisions. And yet Clark's research showed that it doesn't always teach the best character. Sometimes, depending upon how the adults lead the sport experience, uh, kids can learn poor character and difficult examples. Um, and so Clark said, gosh, I'm an educator and why don't we come up with an educational program to elevate the culture of sports so that we are always teaching kids the good lessons and the good values that come from the sport experience. And thus Play Like a Champion came about. We started with the youth coach clinic and um, added the parent workshop very quickly and then expanded into the high school area to work with high school coaches. Um, we've added some programming for athletes as well. We have um, athlete retreats and we have a program called CHAMPS, which stands for Character, Honor and Morality and Play by Student Athletes. And it's essentially a student athlete group for kids who want to explore um, spirituality and sport and understand uh, the moral values and moral issues that come about by being an athlete. And then uh, they can take those into their life. Um, one of the things, though, that we found uh, as we began working in this space in 2006 is that there are two worlds of sport for youth. There's the world of sport for the haves, the kids who have the means and the resources to um, become a part of a team. Um, and then there are the have nots and kids who are living in um, neighborhoods of poverty often are timed out of sport and they don't have the opportunity to be involved in a team. And so at Play Like a Champion, we say this is unjust and we want to do something about that. And so we created a program called A Team for Every Child. And I'll turn it over to Clark to say a little more about that. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. Um, so um, what we noticed is Kristen uh, said, and, uh, you know, Andre, Andrew, um, please uh, uh, jump in here if you'd like. Um, uh, what we um, noticed, as Kristen said, in in, in the uh, some of the low income neighborhoods where we were working, um, there were two problems. Uh, one, the one Kristen mentioned, the first one is that youth sports in the United States today is a lot different uh, from youth sports when I was growing up. So when I, I grew up a long, long time ago. Um, youth sports, just about any sport, football, soccer, uh, there wasn't as much soccer, by the way, um, uh, but baseball um, uh, and basketball, th these were all free. And uh, we didn't have the club sports that we have today, uh, for example, and soccer, um, club soccer is, and, and travel soccer is, is the way uh, where you want to go as a child if you want to be able to play at a college level or uh, professionally. Um, so uh, they were able, we could play for free. Um, today, uh, most sports, even public school sports, I'm not sure what your experience um, is, uh, Andre and, and Andrew, but um, most sport, even in public schools, there's a fee. So that excludes a lot of children. And it excludes more and more uh, low children from low-income families each year. The second problem we noticed is that our youth sports system um, selects out the most elite athletes to play, um, but it doesn't do a very good job um, allowing children who aren't as gifted athletically or who don't have the same opportunities when they're young 
to develop their skills. So only the best kids get, get to play really. And a lot of the children, um, when they start out playing, um, if they're not successful, um, they feel they don't belong to the team. They're not welcome there. When we started working in the low income neighborhoods, um, uh, we discovered that a lot of children want to play and it would really help those children uh, we're, if they did play, they would find um, mentors and their coaches. Uh, they would find uh, 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 friendships and peer support um, with the kids. Um, in some of the neighborhoods, or most of the neighborhoods we worked in and the neighborhoods we're working in today, um, there is a problem with street, street gangs and a problem with street violence. I don't, again, we'd, we'd love to hear from you as to what's happening in your cities. Um, well, yeah. So I'm gonna, uh, yeah. I, I, I know that I came in just a little late, but caught yes. my attention. Uh, yeah. My name's Andrew Flores. I'm uh, at Holy Cross of San Antonio. Uh, I've been there for 21 years, but I graduated from there also back in 1980. Yeah. So I, I, I've had two two uh, young men who have graduated from Holy Cross also. But well, um, what caught what caught my attention was when you you all have play like a champion. Well, I'm also a math teacher besides a coach. Yeah. And uh, in front of my 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 door, you'll you'll notice uh, a sign that um that says uh, "Learn math like a champion." Uh, right. So my kids have have gotten uh, used to hitting the sign like the way Notre Dame football players hit their signs. But you Thank know, you. going back to yeah. to your sports, um, uh, you know, I I I coach golf. Um, it, it was for about 19 years and. Where our school's located, it's on the west side of San Antonio. Um, economically, it's not very, you know, it's not very wealthy around the area. And Brother yeah. Stanley in, in, envisioned opening up Holy Cross in an area where where children could not afford uh, a Catholic education. So Brother Brother Stanley and and many of the brothers who taught me did a very good job on 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 uh, on you know showcasing Holy Cross there and allowing everyone. Just like you're talking about sports, allowing everyone to the opportunity of having a, a, a Catholic education and yeah. sport wise, golf uh, kind of relates to that a little bit because you know golf doesn't doesn't need for you to be six feet tall, doesn't need for you to oh, be right. two fifty. You know, yeah. any size matters and uh, doesn't matter. And and so uh, it's 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 been fun seeing children who were gifted in in my golf program and then those. Who just weren't gifted, and and we were able to allow golf to um, not only become affordable, um, but also allow children to explore the sport to see, you know what, maybe golf is for for me. So we've had a lot of young children that have gone through the program. Who, yes, you know, there's not going to be college afterwards or nothing like that, but it was just to allow them to build up their self esteem, to to build up character regarding uh, some of the values that golf. Uh, offers uh, a lot of individuals um, that other sports do also, but especially golf, yeah. there's just a lot of things there. But um, I appreciate how you guys are, are, you know, mention a lot of things that that I know that my my kids have gone through and 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 have been allowed to to play a sport at, at Holy Cross, and some have ventured out to go play collegiate wise, and and again, it's 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 a lot of fun hearing you guys uh, explain some of the things that that you know we've we've experienced uh it's really great to hear from you matthew um and and that's right you've captured the uh what our mission is and i think our, our vision is um to take the good work that you're doing um actually to share it with others so we Aunt Kristen and i appreciate your sharing it with us and then maybe to put our heads together with people like you and, 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 and Andres, and um, so we can get some uh, more ideas about how to share um, the experience that you provide through golf. We, we do um, believe that just because your uh, family doesn't have much money, is struggling, uh, that doesn't, shouldn't mean that you can't play a sport like golf or, or a sport like um, uh, maybe like uh, tennis, uh, a lot of people see them as country club sports, but exactly. they don't have to be country club sports. They could be sports for everyone, but we need people like you and 
organizations like that, the ones that the Holy Cross brothers have been building. So thank you. Uh, I just want to add, uh, Coach Flores, I'm, the, I'm a new one at the school. This is my first year. That's why probably you don't know me. And uh, I'm the Miss Loya husband. Probably now you know me. Oh, but yes, guys, sir. let me let me tell you this. Um, Holy Cross, the one of the philosophy probably is the best is the, um, the family. I mean, they they uh, always operate as a family. And uh, one of the things that I barely uh, learned from them, they have the the number 426 what 426 means is the street address all right and everybody know the school like 426 and believe me uh, i'm very blessings uh that i'm over here in the holy cross san antonio because like i said this is no a school this is a family catholic family that's so nice, Andre. And you know, that's that's what the value of a team is, is it it can act as like a family for a young person. And especially if the coach uh, is a caring coach mentor, um, you know, even especially if things are stressful in their family of origin, um, to have a coach that says, I believe in you and you can do this and I'm gonna help you along. I'm gonna mentor you and your teammates are your brothers and your sisters and we're gonna help you. That's the incredible value of a team, isn't it? Well, yeah, and, and Mr. Loya, I, I, you know, I, I work a couple of classrooms away from his wife. And like I said, I'm a graduate from Holy <laughs> Cross. And, and of course the 426, we, we're on 426 San Felipe Street and 426 is just, a symbol that that we wanted to implement to the alumni and to our to our family that you know uh, one thing that Father Moreau um, has has blessed us with was that um, at Holy Cross um, as long as your heart wants to be there you know you, you're always accepted you know we we don't we don't say well you know you need to be in the top ninety percentile or there there are no requirements other than if your heart wants to be there. Uh, you, you need to be part of our family. Um, we don't, we don't, uh, we accept everybody. And, and, and that goes along with our sports, you know, sport wise, you know, we're, we're, we're not a very big school right now. We're at about 350 uh, boys and girls, middle school through high school. And so, you know, we don't have the liberty of saying, well, you and you and you, you're JV, you, no, no. Um, it's gotten to the point where everyone's important, you know, everyone's varsity, everyone's, JV, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who you are, and and you know it's it's nice to hear Mr. Loya talk about Holy Cross because, like I said, I graduated there in 1980, so I was back there in 1975. So I was honored and blessed to be taught by predominant brothers of Holy Cross. You know, our laymen were very few back when I was there, and we were all boys, and um, that's why hearing you guys speak of of athletics. Um, and even at the youthful part, you know, where, or CYO and, and again, I heard you mention select, you know, select ball, of course, you know, you're not very good. You're not going to get selected. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you, everybody gets the, uh, opportunity to play and, and whether you're good or not, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what I tell my kids in golf is, is if you're able to accept losing, like you do winning, then, then you got nothing to worry about. Because winning's winning's not a problem. It's a losing part that people get get you know can't 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 cope with it. And and golf is one thing where you know um, you have to understand that you're not going to have a ton of great 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 rounds. You're going to have a lot more bad rounds than you are great rounds. And so if you can understand that part, then then you're not going to have an issue. You're not going to have a problem. And and that's why here um, I'm glad that you guys are taking the time to um, to to share. All the things that that you know. Again, I'm only 58 years old, so I'm not very old, but I'm I'm you know I'm still learning a lot of things. And but I'm I'm glad that you guys are bringing up some things that I've heard and maybe some things that I've not not experienced. So I just want to uh, uh, thank you guys. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, you know, you're talking our language, Andrew, because uh, you know. 
play like a champion, you know, we say that sports should be for all kids, like Clark said, not just the elite kids, and that every child is important on a team, even if they're not the high score, right? And so we help coaches to capitalize on that and to encourage that and, and really build into every athlete on their team, um, you know, whether they're, they're the most talented or you know, the ones who are just starting out, like you said, with golf. I'm curious, how did you, how did you make golf affordable for your, your kids? Well, um, there, I, I, um, I worked for the government prior to being a teacher. I worked for the government for 19 years here at San Antonio before the base shut down. After it shut down, I had the opportunity to work for the PGA tour for two years. Um, right. So I was able to uh, network a, a lot of people um, that I, hopefully if I ever coached the golf, that I was able to meet a lot of people in, 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 at the country clubs. And um, so all I did was hold their names together. And um, when I was given the opportunity, um, I went back to school <laughs> at, a, at a young age of about 37 um, the government paid for that. And so uh, I went back and got, I was able to get two degrees and, and get into teaching and, um, and golf. My boys were into golf. So I got into it. And through the networking that I did, I was able to obtain a lot of friends who donated clubs, uh, uh, associations that, uh, that, you know, didn't require a lot of income for, for people to play. So I was able to introduce golf at a very inexpensive um, uh, uh, amount of money. And uh, my golfers were allowed to play golf seven days a week for free. Um, they were able, as long as we, we did, you know, we picked the range. We did certain little things, little jobs out there. But golf became very affordable for, for, my, for my boys. So families were very appreciative of that. And then again, a lot of fundraising. You know, a lot of fundraising to get us to certain places, and and we we were blessed that Holy Cross you know took care of certain funds, but then we were able to raise money, so it became affordable. Um, so because uh, of not, you know, golf is not very affordable, you know, unfortunately, uh, and fees and that create issues. But that openness of saying, if as long as you want to play, as long as you commit, then then there's room for you. Okay. Uh, we never cut nobody. I never cut anybody. Um, so um, it's it's right in line with what you guys are talking about. Um, so that's why um, you know I'm I'm kind of blessed to to hear you know that you guys are 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 um, promoting this um, uh, this your, your your values towards towards sports and um, hopefully guys willing you know. Uh, if I ever go back to, to, to teach or to, to coach Little League, um, it's going to be, again, with the same values of, of just as long as you want to play, that's all that really matters. Uh, that's wonderful. Well, well, I'm sure Kristen's about to say this, but let me say it first. Um, that we um, play like a champion organization is in, um, uh, Kristen, I remember how many cities, but many, many cities across the country. Um, we are not, uh, to my knowledge, in San Antonio. Um, I've visited San Antonio um, uh, on a few occasions. I lo love this city. Um, but um, a Play Like a Champion operates as a, as a big family, um, as a national family. And we form friendships. Um, uh, and try to bring people together. Um, and our, our idea is that um, by bringing people together who share the values that uh, we were talking about, um, uh, Andrew and others, we're, we're, um, we're able to sort of strengthen each other, I think. And, and then with newer coaches, we're able to help um, bring them into this uh, family atmosphere. And, um, and help them to coach the way you talked about it, where all kids feel welcome, uh, all kids experience um, a team, uh, a supportive team. We try to help the kids to uh, give each other support, uh, look after the kid who's a little bit 
quiet or awkward or whatever, because this is good practice in life. And then provide up, and then with the larger communities in the cities we work to try to provide opportunities like the opportunities that you were able to create, um, Andrew, so that we can have a more uh, just society where every child, as you say, matters. You shouldn't, we shouldn't be telling children you don't count because you, your family doesn't have the money or doesn't have a, the transportation to get you here. We need, we need to find ways to include everyone. So I'm inviting you, um, maybe we'll send you some information or if you shared with us your, your emails, um, we, we'd love to give you some information and maybe you could talk to you know, your, your, your schools and uh, maybe they'd be interested in, um, in joining our family. We'd certainly be interested in having you. Sure, I'll send you my uh, school email address. And, and like I said, um, uh, whenever you're, you're in San Antonio again, um, uh, try to find time to swing by Holy Cross. Absolutely. It's, um, it's a small, small little campus with a lot of heart. And um, brother, brother Stanley and, and all the brothers who taught me and all the other ones who are still there um, and, and you know, did such a great job um, uh, teaching us, you know, the morals and values of, of what, you know, Holy Cross meant. And um, again, you know, the mission of Father Moreau. And, and so, yes, if you guys are ever around, um, hopefully I'll still be at Holy Cross. I, like I said, I've been there 21 years. Okay. But um, uh, you guys would be more than welcome to come by Holy Cross. And uh, I just sent out my email address. I see um, it. So, um, yes, uh, more than welcome to send me anything that you feel uh, would be of great value to us to um, to promote, you know, you all with us. And, uh, you know, just uh, give me, a, you know, just give me an email and let me know what how I can be of help. We'll do I, that. I'm going to send you my personal email because in the school, I don't know if there's a policy that, like I said, I'm a new one. This is my first year. I don't know if the coaches uh, coaches allowed to have a school email address, but oh, I'm going to send to you Great. my uh, personal email. All In right. that email, I receive everything from my uh, clerk director and uh, from the people in both uh, in the schools. And uh, I'm very welcome. I'm, let me tell you what, guys. Um, in Mexico, we have a big problem. Mexico, we don't have a lot of institutions like... Um, pay for the sports uh yeah. there are a couple ones like i'm gonna name it probably you never know like uh monterey tech and which is uh pro uh, probably one of the biggest schools private schools in in, in mexico and uh, obviously um the there are two another school like uh unam which is like uni uh, i thought this is the oldest uh, uh college in uh, in america and uh, the Polytechnico, which is another, and there are some, uh, um, but it's very few that pay for the, uh, the, for the kids to play with them. Most of them, they have to play in, the, in, uh, in clubs. Actually, my, uh, my high school level, I do not play in high school. I do not play in school. I played as a, as a club. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, Clubs, we always have a lot of resources and we okay. always uh, have to ha <clears throat> do the same as a Holy Cross. A lot of activities, a lot of something to get more money. So yeah. uh, it's a quite a bit difference. And I don't talking about for anybody. I mean, I love the schools here in the States, but uh, the kids here in the States have the most opportunity in the high school because the, do not pay nothing. To play at the school, yes, obviously, if you're not good athlete, you have, but you have le lower levels to to play with. That's let's say if you're not <clears throat> a very good, uh, let's focus on football. If you're not very good in football, okay, you have a JB. Um, probably some schools have us until three teams to uh, feed in you, so nobody caught anybody. I mean, the problem is uh, for any kid is if you have enough talent. Yes, obviously, you're gonna be in the varsity team but other other than that 
you're gonna have a spot and you go, you have a competition, a good competition too. So, and uh, like I said, uh, I'm gonna give you my uh, email address and uh, I'm, I'm with you guys. I mean, if you need something, uh, count yeah. on me. Yeah, well, we say we'd like, like to get you in the family and get ideas and also get your, um, I think you bring a lot of spirit to, uh, to what we're doing and, and, the, and what we want to do. I think not every place is as fortunate as I think um, your school is that you, um, you can provide opportunities so everybody gets to play. Maybe not everybody is, you know, people may be on different levels, but everybody gets to play. So we really appreciate that. You know, Andre and uh, Andrew, we have a, um, uh, our, our program, we do coach workshops and every Tuesday we send a reminder of something we might've taught in that original coach clinic um, or something that goes even further um, so that we have a constant flow of educational content to teach our kind of um, champion philosophy. And so if you guys are interested, I can add you to that weekly note list. So every Tuesday, you'll get like kind of a champion message from us if you would like. Sure, that, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. It's fine for me too. Yeah, yep. I'm very yeah. welcome. And then we can get a little sense of what we're about. Right. Uh, also, um, just while again, I'm thinking of it. Um, we also, we haven't I don't know that we've been doing it as much of this as we used to, but we have tr uh, translated some of our materials um, in Spanish. Uh, and, um, you know, we could talk to you about that, but we found that particularly with parents, um, oh. it was helpful to, um, when we do some clinics like we're, you know, like this, but we would talk about uh, there's issues around parenting and, like if that. you need me uh, as a Spanish speaker, yes, we cuente, always do. <laughs> cuente conmigo, no tengo ningún problema. Okay. And uh, my wife, she's a Spanish teacher, so everything that uh, if you need me, I probably consult with her about the um, the good spelling because sometimes I'm uh, I'm. I mean, my the spelling is not my best. <laughs> so, but I can talk. I can talk to her, and uh, if you need me in Spanish, uh, with the Spanish speaker, uh, I'm. I mean, uh, I'm very happy to do that. Gracias. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I pulled up this screen because I, I wanted to say um, many people are surprised that what they're doing as a coach is important to the Vatican. And so I wanted to just share it with you guys, Andre and Andrew, that um, the Vatican released a document on sport in 2018, June of 2018. And it was called Giving the Best of Yourself. And it is the first document that came out of the Vatican about sport. And um, it was written to highlight the role of the church and to in the sports world and how sports can be an instrument of encounter, formation, mission, and sanctification. And that's what Pope Francis said about this document. And so, you know, what, one of the things that, that we did it play like champion. We got all excited about it. Like, you know, well, let's read what the Vatican has to say. And <laughs> we got excited because it's really what we've been saying since 2006. And uh, what they said was that, and I can show you if you see the screen here, these are the kind of the four bubbles uh, that the document goes through. And, and they start with sport is play. And, you know, we're play like a champion and we're so big on this in that sports have to be fun for the kids, you know, and sometimes the adults can make it just all work and not fun anymore. And so, you know, we remind coaches and parents that sports are games and they they should be played with zeal and energy and just for the fun and that coaches need to introduce fun and joy into that experience. Um, so that play is so important. And in this document, they make a really big deal about that as well, the playfulness and that um, within the play is where the person then develops and grows. I don't know, Clark, do you wanna add anything to the play 
Um, well, maybe I'm, I'm sure that um, that you're familiar with this, but I think playing um, uh, within our culture uh, in the United States is, is, is become a problem. I'll give you an example that I'm, I'm thinking about right now. Um, so I was talking to a principal of a, of a middle school. And um, so these would be sixth, seventh and eighth grade children. And they just came back to school last week. And um, uh, so the principal of the school said, I thought that my, these children, they've been, these children have been out of school for over a year. This is in Indiana where, where I live, where Kristen is moving back. And uh, so the principal said, I was so excited to see them. And I thought when we all come together, it'll be like a honeymoon. But then she said, when we, um, when we came back last week, uh, it wasn't a honeymoon. The children were angry. They said all they wanted to do was fight. Um, and she said, uh, and, and I said, well, when, how much time will they be in school? When does summer vacation start? And she said, the first of June. And I said, well, they're only gonna be in school for six weeks, what happens then? And she said, they're gonna to have to go to summer school because they didn't learn anything for, for over a year. And I said, oh, well, what's that gonna be like? And she said, it's gonna be terrible. A lot of children won't go to school. They refuse to go and their parents won't be there to supervise them and, and, and they won't go. So I said, well, what are the, why don't they want to go to summer school? And she said, because it's boring. It's like punishment. Um, and, and I said, well, well, couldn't we make summer school fun? And uh, she wasn't sure. And I said, well, we can play sports. We can, um, we could, we can make math fun. Um, I, I, I believe we can make math fun. Andrew, I'm sure you can do that. Um, but we need, you know, we, we really need to work with the, with the children to make this an experience that they, um, that, you know, that's going to help them. And, and, and we, we, we need to work on the anger. We really need to uh, listen to them and try to help them before they can learn. So play like a champion. Um, I mean, the first thing that we do is make sure sport is play. So uh, I, I think when you say, um, uh, you know, do, do your math like a champion, but, but we want you to feel um, good about yourself, whether you're doing math or kicking a soccer ball or, or throwing a football. So um, I think you two, you appreciate, or the three of you do appreciate um, that, that after all sports a game. And the only reason why uh, anyone should play it is because it's fun. And of course, we need math. We need we need language to do well in school. But again, um, these these skills um, help us. They help us to find work. But but they're enjoyable, and um, and we need to make it enjoyable. So uh, we work hard on uh, making sure that the children are always playing um, for the fun for the fun of the game. And um, and and I think that's important especially when children are angry or they're bored or they feel um, they're not so well connected with other people. Does that make, I hope that makes some sense. Um, and I think in our culture uh, where Kristen and I have heard coaches screaming at children and getting angry at children when they make a mistake, that we, we, work, with we work with those coaches to say, that does not help the child. And um, you have to approach this. Um, uh, you have to approach children um, in, in ways that are loving, in ways that are supportive, and in ways that are going to help the children to want to play themselves. I have a question. Uh, okay, besides the, obviously the self-control from coaches, uh, I can give you one uh, sample. When I uh, I'm start coaching in, uh, in the high school level, at the age of 22 years old. Yes. So uh, I'm always in the high level uh, jailing the people. And yeah. one of the biggest coach approached to me and says, okay, you're hungry, you're angry. And he says, no, really. Okay, let me tell you, ask you this. How are you gonna uh, let your kids know 
when you're really, really angry, you're going to shoot somebody or what? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. You have to make clear this difference. But my question is, uh, I mean, uh, I, we, um, I mean, coaches, we understand that point, but uh, how you guys uh, recommend us to the coaches or how you can tell to any parents say, hey, uh, let's say Mr. Uh, Wilson, uh, okay, it's your kid that uh, the player is not you. You're the big star in uh, any sport in the football or soccer. But yeah, you was a big school, but this not your this this is not your time. So the kids do not have fun because they have coaches behind his back at the field and parents or dad behind his back at the places and it's a over i mean it's a hard pressure with the kids yes right. and that's one of the reasons the statistics are really grim and concerning that 70 percent of kids will stop playing sport by the age of 13 because there's too much pressure and it's not fun anymore and so that you know this idea of play is so important that you know, there's, there's joy in the movement um, and that these are games and you, you grow and learn through the ups and the downs. Um, you know, I think, Andrew, you said it before, it's not just about the wins, but it's learning how to manage the losses, you know? Um, and yeah, we, that's why we, when Clark started this in 2006 with youth coaches, the first thing the coaches said was you need to have a parent workshop because the parents are draining yeah. the fun and they're yelling at their kids. I mean, Clark's research will show that 70% of kids have been yelled at by an adult on the stands. I yeah. mean, they are children. I mean, why are the adults so caught up in the child's game, right? Yeah, yeah. in fact, it's kind of funny, um, uh, but I, I remember the workshop. I, were you there, Kristen? I, I was, it was teaching in, in um, Southern California and, uh, the workshop was in Spanish, okay? It was for parents. And my Spanish is terrible. I, I, I did spend time, um, I went years ago in 1971 uh, to Mexico City to study Spanish. And I got to visit a lot of places in Mexico. And I, I returned uh, to Pueblo, Mexico uh, 30 years ago, but I haven't really been back there in a while. I was there for a wedding in Guadalajara not too long ago, but um, my Spanish wasn't very good. But in in I could understand in Spanish. This parent said, "See, we were talking to parents, and uh, and uh, and um, uh, no, we were talking to coaches." And and as Kristen said, the coach said, "You know, parents really need this." Um, and uh, that and and we're we're always looking for coaches who can have the conversations like we're having. Uh, to tell parents, one of the things that you just said, you had your time, parent. You you were you were a player, and that's good. But that time is over now, and your role now is um, to help your your child. And the only thing you should be saying to your child is, "I love to see you play. I I I want you to have a good a good time, and I'm going to support you." And um and try to make sure that this is fun for you. But we do find that. We have these little clinics that lasts about an hour and a half. And um, we have conversations with parents about how they, how they treat their children and how they feel, how they handle losing so that the parent can help uh, you, the coaches, um, to make this a really good experience. But we do think that most parents today need to go to this workshop. And a lot of the schools that we work with um, require the parents to take the workshop. And sometimes the parents don't want to go. But after they go, after they have this experience of talking to other parents, and it's led by, by a coach like, like the two of you, um, they tell us how much they appreciate it. Over 90% say, I'm happy I did that, and I want to bring another parent. So we think that you have to make sure all the parents take some time to think about what they're doing. 
um, and and if they don't do that, I think you're right. You're gonna you're gonna have the problems that you talked about. So that's kind of why we play like one reason why play like a champion exists. Why we're talking to you today. Why we would like to come to San Antonio, because we would like to support um, this these these parent workshops, so that then parents can um, be more supportive. So in the parent workshop, we we offer you know first of all we we kind of help parents to see where maybe they've made a mistake in sport parenting. You know, if they're yelling at the coach or yelling at the referees or demeaning the kids on the field, you know, we say that's just not appropriate. We know as Christians, we shouldn't do that. Right. So that's the first step. Um, and then we then teach them something that's helpful to their children. And that is to emphasize the virtues that come from being a champion. So we're play like a champion. So we say, OK, parents, if you're thinking about a champion, what are the qualities, what are the characteristics that create a champion? And so, you know, we get them thinking beyond the winner, beyond the team that is the, you know, the holding the trophy at the end of this tournament. Um, you know, what else encompasses a champion? Sure, that the team with the trophy is the champion, but what characteristics should those athletes have shown in their play? Um, and so, you know, humility, um, encouragement of their teammates, a team spirit, um, a good attitude, um, sportsmanship. Um, so we get them thinking about these qualities and then help them to see how they can encourage those virtues in their own child. Uh, that sport is not just about the physical development, but it's creating, hopefully when it's done well and in a champion environment, that it creates a better person. And so how do parents have a role in that? And that's by encouraging these other virtues that revolve in the sport experience. And then also pointing out when maybe it hasn't worked out well that in that regard. You know, if there was an example of poor sportsmanship, um, parents talking with kids like, how could that have been better? Um, the other thing we do in the parent workshop is, um, you know, we encourage parents to get the kids to discover the answer instead of a lot of times when I'll go to talk to athletes, they'll say, can you tell my, my mom to just be quiet on the ride home from my games? because <laughs> all she does is tell me what I did wrong and what I should have done. And so, you know, we tell the parents to instead ask open-ended questions of their kids, you know, like, hey, how do you think the game went? And how do you think you could have played better? You know, just open-ended questions so you get the kids talking rather than lecturing at them and helping them discover the answers. I think, Andre, you said that at the beginning that we learn how to make decisions through our sport experience. Um, and so allow the kids to discover those answers. So that's really a life lesson. So you can see here these, um, so these are the elements of this uh, Vatican document and talking about play and then what are the virtues of a champion. So play like a champion. Uh, the document also talks about some of the toxic elements involved in sport. And one of them they do highlight is parents' behavior sometimes is toxic. And then finally the document says, um, you know, let's create an apostolate for sports. And that's essentially a group of leaders um, engaging in work um, to develop athletes well through the sport experience. And um, on the screen here, these are two, two um, Play Like a Champion coaches from Chicago, and they are at our annual conference. Every June, we have a conference, and um, that's where Clark says, you know, we really work on, it's like our family reunion. We gather together to be in kinship together, to support each other in our work to develop athletes. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what we'd like to invite you into is uh, to become part of this apostolate for sports. I, um, okay, I'll do this. Uh, <clears throat> always I'm support the um, God as our head coach. <clears throat> and uh, I'm a military guy too. So I was involved in the army and uh, <laughs> 
is a uh, like funny thing. And um, before the start uh, away game, we go to the um, uh, Virgin Mary, Mary, and uh, we we pray. And one of our kids, they are uh, laughing around. So, and like a military guy, I pull up those guys and come on, assume push up position until we done to pray. And uh, it was the second game, and uh, we uh, I'm. I'm waiting to or my um, uh, my director call me because he walked next to us in that time, and uh, I'm expect he gonna call me to ask me why those guys are in the push up position and the rest is is uh, is the, uh, they're praying, and uh, no, he never called. Probably he understand well that uh, it was a disciplinary action. And uh, it was a stop. After that, everybody plays silence and uh, with the heart. So uh, yes, I understand that uh, my head coach or the uh, in my in the soccer team, I'm not a head coach in the the football. The football is a nice guy and it's a talent guy, uh, Coach Harrison. Believe me, if you know that guy, you can learn a lot. And uh, uh, but and. Uh, in soccer, I says, I'm not the head coach. The head coach is God. All right. If you need something uh, with a uh, hard, hard to uh, solve, don't call me. Call directly to the big guy and he's going to have the answers. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Was there other topics? I mean, I we have this presentation, but it it seems like it's better just to chat. Are there other topics that you guys are interested in, and um, you know, in, around sport that we we want to just chat about here? Well, then maybe what I'll do is I'll we'll show you this. Um, so part of the Vatican document um, was uh, we, we held a symposium at Notre Dame uh, two years ago to talk about the document. And from that symposium, we put together a pastoral action plan um, to address some of the things that the document said were concerning in the world of sport and how we might uh, change those things for the better. And so we also had a chance to publish this book uh, last year with the NCEA called Play Like a Champion, Following the Vatican's Lead to Elevate the Culture of American Sport. And the way we said, you know, it's important to, to think and talk about sport, but if we're really gonna make a difference, we gotta create a plan to make sport accessible for all children and also wholly developmental so that it's not just focused on the wins and losses, to conduct it the way you guys conduct your, your practices. And so the the pastoral action plan said that sport must, and it's these four bubbles here, um, that it, it, sport must serve the human person so that um, we shouldn't treat athletes as robots or um, you know, just only care about their physical development and care about them if they're the best on the team, but it should serve every person on the team. Um, the, the document also called for education for coaches, you know, that coaches are, um, you know, educators are part of the school system and that it's your mission to uh, educate the whole person. And so to provide some professional development for coaches to do that well. And then finally, these last two points that sport is a culture of inclusion and encounter. This speaks to our, our efforts and our, our world's efforts to create more opportunities for children to play, especially children who um, you know, might not have the educate or the, the financial means like you've done with golf, Andrew. And that's why I love to hear how you created that opportunity. Maybe I'll just click right into this. Clark, you want to talk a little about the history? Oops, let me go back a little. Yeah. Uh, you know about Bishop Shield too. Uh, yeah, just to say a, a word or two about him. Uh, the little history that, uh, now this is, um, 
I don't know the, um, uh, I'd, I'd like to know the history of, of youth sport in, in Mexico, but I can tell you about it in, um, in the United States as far as I know it, that um, in the 1800s, uh, sports was for the leisure class, they were called. Um, these would be the very wealthy people. Um, they had, um, their children played sports like tennis and golf um, um, in country clubs. Uh, for the uh, children of, of immigrants um, uh, coming uh, to the United States, uh, those families were poor, those children worked. Uh, they were expected to be in factories or to be on the farms and whatever. Um, as people moved into the American cities, um, uh, there were more and more children who really they didn't have work for them. Uh, they were on the streets and people were concerned about uh, what children were doing um, dur during the day and, and whatever after school. So that's where youth sports began. And, um, and as I've pointed out those sports were free because they wanted the, the children's families didn't have money. Um, so children were welcome to play. And that's where we built gymnasia, we built playgrounds um, and, and, and soccer fields and, and football fields, baseball fields for children. Um, in the city of Chicago, Bishop Scheel, um, uh, well, at this point when he had just become a priest, um, he was a very good pitcher, a very good baseball player, could have played uh, professionally, but because he decided to be a priest, uh, he never got a chance. Uh, but he loved sports. Um, his his was asked to be a, 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 a chaplain in the prison in Chicago, which is still there. Um, and um, at that time when in the um, 1920s, um, Children who um, committed uh, murders and, and, and serious crimes, they were hung. Um, and Bishop Shields' job was to walk them to the gallows, um, accompany them at, uh, when they were hung. So after this happened to one child, uh, uh, Bishop Shields said, I had enough. And I, uh, he decided at that point, he said a prayer to God. And he said, I can't uh, bear watching this happen to our children. These children are often they commit crimes because older children, or in, in this last case, they were paid uh, to do this by, by, um, by one of the adult crime gangs. So he started the Catholic Youth Organization. He started Catholic Youth Sports in the 1930s to help children. Um, who really needed support. And uh, we think that it's very, very important today that youth sports um, not be re-gentrified or, or not become um, available only to, to, to wealthy families. It sounds like the families uh, that um, Holy Cross School is working with um, that you were able to give all these children uh, the opportunity to play. That's so important. Uh, we want to help that to happen in other places in the country. And we see, Kristen and I see every day, so many children who are getting into trouble. Um, they end up in, in prison um, uh, really because they never had a chance um, in life. And so we're, we, we believe sports is for everyone. And this is an important message that Pope Francis has, um, that, um, that all children really have a right to play sport. Um, and it's up to us as adults to work to make sure that they, they have that opportunity. So we're, we're grateful. We want to end our presentation by, by thanking actually the three of you for making this um, possible for us to speak to you. Uh, but also we feel blessed that we had the opportunity to hear from you, um, Andres, and you, Andrew, about the good work you do. And um, uh, we, we really want to thank you and hope that we can spread the good news that um, that you're telling us to other people that we have wonderful coaches and wonderful opportunities. Yep.
And so, you know, this, this would be the way to create that encounter is uh, no youth turned away. That's what our picture here says. And this was a, a football team, the football coach Andre. This is a football team that uh, we brought to Notre Dame to watch the spring uh, football when we could code of spring football games. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is why we do what we do. It's, it's for the children. They're, they're our children. Um, you know, it's not just my kids who are my kids who are my children, but these are all our children and we can serve them well through sport like you guys do. So yeah, thank you so much for the chance to meet you and get to know you and thank you for what you do for the kids in sport. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, uh, Clark. Thank you, Christine. Okay. And uh, like I said, uh, if you, uh, I'm very glad to uh, be part of the we will, we will this program. Stay. Okay. Count on me, all right? Oh, we will. Yes. And you'll look for a first note to come on Tuesday. So you'll start to get our stuff, okay? Okay. Thank all you. right. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, now. See you, coach. That went great. I'm so glad we're like this <laughs> conversation. So productive. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was just. It was a nice chat, wasn't it? It was a little more of a, 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 a like a coffee and conversation uh, time. Yeah, yes. it felt. But at the same time, like it was very like reflective. Like when we were talking about um, how privileged the sports sometimes can be, I reflected a lot on like my upbringing. Uh, how much I had access to it. And like, even back in Brazil, because soccer is so big, other yeah. sports don't get a lot of funding, a lot of incentive. Okay. And that was like a challenge that I saw like other people going through. So like, it was an important conversation to have. And I'm so glad that like, I was part of this to be able to hear that. Thank you so much, both of you. Okay. Thank you. Pleasure yes. to meet you, Philippe. Good luck. Right. Take care now, Philippe. You Bye -bye. too. Bye-bye. <laughs>